what's going on everybody? This is DK Dynamite, and tonight I have an emergency video here for you guys discussing a ton of Season 1 content that's live right now in-game, plus even more. Definitely stay tuned. But before we jump into that, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below, because we're very close to 100,000 subscribers here on the main channel. Really appreciate it. Also drop a like and turn notifications on to stay up to date with everything going on in Modern Warfare 2, Warzone 2, Warzone Mobile, and any other future Call of Duty as well. As a huge reminder, it was confirmed by Infinity Ward earlier this evening that Season 1, or a part of it at least, does officially begin at 6 a.m. Pacific, which is 8 o'clock Central and 9 o'clock Eastern. Now, that's only going to be the multiplayer and Spec Ops content, not the Battle Pass, apparently. That will end up releasing along with Warzone 2 and DMZ at about 10 a.m. Pacific, which is 12 o'clock Central or 1 o'clock Eastern. So, I'm happy they've separated the release times for some of the new content across all these different modes, just to make sure the stability is on point and everybody out there gets a proper chance to really try everything without getting too stressed out or overwhelmed with the amount of content that's coming out on a single day. Now, I do want to let you guys know I'll be streaming live here on the channel starting at about 6 a.m. Central is doing a bit of a countdown to the first part of season one's launch with multiplayer and spec ops and then we'll continue just hanging out doing open lobbies I got a giveaway for you guys of two Burger Town skins from Modern Warfare 2 thanks to a good buddy of mine Hells and then we'll wait around for the release of Warzone 2 and DMZ so we can hop into that record some b-roll get some videos done we have a long day ahead of us when it comes to the launch of season one and I couldn't be more excited to share all that with you guys here on the main channel but it was also posted somewhere in one of the recent blog posts that combat record isn't actually coming out until in season for Modern Warfare 2 so they kind of just snuck that in there and didn't really specify it anywhere else on Twitter or on the Trello board so although it was confirmed as a season 1 feature it was never specifically said it was a launch feature for the first season but at least it is coming out in season 1 at some point more information again is within the blog that I'll have linked down below in this video's description wanted to clarify that for those out there wondering what's going on with combat record but it is confirmed tier 1 or hardcore for multiplayer is still coming out as season one does today on november the 16th now unfortunately it looks like modern warfare 2 is gonna experience the same issues that vanguard did which is when every preload goes out a little bit of the content if not most of it becomes available through private matches not that it's necessarily a bad thing but it kind of takes away from the charm of when a season actually begins because people out there can just go ahead and try everything in private games hours or even days before the season is supposed to start which i'm not really a fan of but hopefully future seasons going forward don't have this problem however as of right now you can use the m13b the bass p and the victus weapons within private matches as well as checking out the new shoot house remake and on top of that too i think there's even access to the new game modes coming in season one like cyber attack so there's a lot you can already play around with as you're gonna see footage on screen so you can see so obviously the bass p smg and the victus sniper will be available for free through the season one battle pass i made a separate video about the battle pass earlier this evening when the trailer dropped for it, along with the blog post but the m M13B Assault Rifle is going to be unlocked through DMZ and DMZ only. Obviously, if a bundle comes out for it in the future, you can get it that way, but it is confirmed in DMZ. You can unlock the M13B by defeating the chemist in the radiation zone of DMZ and extracting with his dropped weapon. So, I'll make a separate video of how to do that once DMZ does drop. Very excited to cover that for you guys. I absolutely love doing tutorials and guides whenever I see fit, whenever they make sense. Love doing it for zombies. Love doing it for Warzone. Can't wait to jump into that when it comes to DMZ as well. Now, although the Chimera Assault Rifle, aka the Honey Badger, isn't coming out until mid-season. You can also get your hands on it here through private matches, which is crazy. You can't play Shipman just yet. That map's not quite ready, but at least you can experience all of this over on Shoot House. Now, each weapon also comes with four unique camos, which you can get a glimpse of right now through these private match lobbies. And I think it's really cool how the camo system works, but something that I've been saying for a little while about Modern Warfare 2 is that it offers... Some of the biggest innovation we've ever seen in Call of Duty, it's just the problem of how it was executed, how the UI has been laid out to where people can actually find some of these things, or how the marketing and blog posts have been, which haven't really explained some of these features all that well. And I don't blame the developers or the staff behind the scenes. They have a lot on their plate. They do a huge job every single day supporting a franchise as big as Call of Duty, but I think Modern Warfare 2 has had an issue surrounding just communication, right? And I think there's a lot of casuals out there that probably don't understand how these systems systems work and I've tried my best to explain things like this to you guys that yeah every weapon comes with universal camos and it's really cool that they're very weapon specific which kind of bleeds into the way weapon receivers work where yeah you want to unlock attachments for x amount of weapons in a family tree you only have to do that one time which is crazy now you can also view the first five prestiges in the progression tab as well and it's really cool seeing how these prestige icons look because again they'll be animated when you see them in lobbies I definitely think that when it comes to the way prestige works in this game it's probably 
probably the best iteration of Prestige to date. I know you might disagree with that, and you might want the classic Prestige back, but here's the thing. That classic system just wouldn't work with what COD 2.0 is going for, with the whole integration about Warzone 2 and eventually Warzone Mobile, the new Battle Pass structure. They have a very clear system in mind that ensures longevity with each game that comes out, that increases player retention, bringing people back each season. So I have no problem with Cold War's Prestige system, which is kind of what this is, where they add a new Prestiges each major update, adding in four or five new ones. I like that, and I prefer having a reason to come back to level up extensively past level 200 each season. That's a big reason to do so, to get those new icons or possible rewards for doing so. It was just the level reset each season that pissed people off, right? Getting to 200 or 500 or 1,000 each season just to end up back at one the next season, that's gone with this game. I'm so happy about that, and I do think people out there will be much more encouraged to really hit whatever the new level cap is each season. Now, there's also a customized calling card tab with new sets of challenges every single prestige. So the thing about this game, although the communication has been a bit off, people out there are still confused about how how the new systems work. It's like I've been saying, right? Once you actually get your hands on with some of these updates and give things a try yourself, things will be more clear to you. But for those out there, they don't have much time to play the game every week. They work extensive hours at work and they come home and they can only play like an hour a day. It's gonna be harder for those people to really grasp what these new systems are. And I get that. So I'm trying to explain them in the best way that I can here for you guys. But Mono for Two definitely offers so much replayability. It offers extensive amounts of options with the grind, right? Not just with getting your camos, but everything else with calling cards, with prestige, with your weapon receipt, and there's so many more features coming out as well. This game offers a lot, and I can't wait to see how much bigger the game gets with each season, because it's not stopping here. There's much more to come. We haven't even seen every game mode release yet. I mean, first of all, Rage doesn't come out until Season 1 Reloaded. That's a whole other experience that is going to open up the door to a whole new set of players that might not like the other modes in the game right now. Now, I definitely can't show you these images on screen, but I'm going to leave this Twitter account down in this video's description. This person is posting lots and lots of pictures of upcoming blueprints, operator skins, and even the surprise bundle that we talked a little bit about in my previous season one recap video and that is the man himself ethan from infinite warfare who will be a playable operator at some point during season one this account has confirmed that that leak was indeed legitimate there's a lot of images on this account again i can't show you any of them on screen or else the video would get taken down we don't have permission to show any data mined or leaked content for you guys i know some of these skins and blueprints are popping up in game via a glitch but when it comes to bundles, the rules are a bit different with how you can cover that here on YouTube. Hopefully that makes sense. But a lot of these outfits look amazing. I mean, there are so many cosmetics coming in season one. I'm gonna be covering all of them as they do release. Now, also for those confused about the preload for season one, the Modern Warfare 2 season one update is live right now to preload on all platforms. 32 gigs on PC, 50 to 60 gigs on Xbox, and about 25 to 30 gigs on PlayStation. The content packs have updates along with the base game. Hopefully that makes sense. Again, Warzone 2 is still free to play alongside DMZ. If you don't own Modern Warfare 2, you can just download Warzone 2 that comes with DMZ, and when you open up the app, boom, you can just play that. You just won't be able to play campaign, multiplayer, and spec ops, obviously, but if you own Modern Warfare 2 and don't plan on playing Warzone 2 or DMZ, you can uninstall Warzone 2 and DMZ from your game without breaking anything. It's completely optional, but the updates are rolling out right now for all platforms.